All right, so the two targets we're going to cover today are, I can I draw, identify, and name some simple examples of alkyl groups, and number three, I can explain what isomers are. All right, here we go. C4H10. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good? Yes? No. <laughs> the kid just got here. Come on, Mr. Rare. Have some patience. That wasn't Yeah. Oh. Is this the only possibility? No. The answer is no. Why? Because it says draw all for this possibility right underneath. <laughs> what if I were to cut this molecule right here and insert this carbon in the middle? It would result. In this. Is it still C4H10? Yes. yes. Is it the same chemical? No. This is a completely different chemical. This right here is called butane and it's used for cigarette lighter fluid. This is called 2-methyl propane. And it's similar to butane, but it has different melting points, different boiling points, different characteristics. Will burn differently. Will burn differently. Will give off different amount of energy when it burns. Folks, this is a different chemical. And yet it has the same formula. And yet it's a different chemical. That's what isomers are. Things get more interesting, though, with the next alkane, butane, C4H10, because there are two different forms of it. The first is what you'd expect, just a chain of carbons with hydrogen stuck wherever they're needed to make each carbon have four bonds. This is called normal butane, or N-butane. But you can also arrange the four carbons differently, by making a chain of three and then branching the fourth one off the center of the chain. This is called isobutane, or I-butane, and even though it has the same chemical formula as N-butane, its structure gives it different properties. For example, N-butane boils at negative 0.5 degrees Celsius, while isobutane boils at negative 11.7 degrees Celsius. These different structures for compounds that have the same molecular formula are called isomers. As you add more and more carbon atoms to the molecule, there are more and more ways that you can arrange them. So the number of atoms in butane only allows for two isomers, N-butane and isobutane. But pentane, or C5H12, has three possible isomers, and C6H14, known as hexane, has five. Again, I could do this all day. But at this table of the number of possible isomers, you can see that that escalated quickly. The takeaway here is that molecules with the same mass and number of atoms can form different structures, and as their structure changes, their properties also change. As a general rule, the larger and more complex alkanes are, the more densely their molecules can pack together, which means that they tend to be liquid or solid instead of gaseous at room temperature. So alkanes with main chains of 5 to 18 carbon atoms, like octane and gasoline, are liquids at room temperature, and those with more than 18 carbon atoms, like paraffin or other waxes, are solids. Now now you're probably picking up on a lot of words that you've heard before, even outside of chemistry class. Octane, propane, methane, paraffin, so on. You can chalk that up to the enormous popularity of these compounds in our daily lives. Like I said, hydrocarbons are super useful because of the types of reactions they can take part in, which I will explain more in a bit. But All right. So compounds that have the same formula but different structure are called isomers. What creates the vast number of isomers? A lot of times, isomers are created by breaking a segment of off the end carbon branch and attaching it to another carbon inside. These are called alkyl groups. Alkyl groups. Alkyl groups. Alkyl groups. Number the longest continuous chain in such a way that the branches are on the smallest number. 
write down the number of the carbon followed by the prefix for the number of carbon in the branch with an ill attached to it. Name the longest continuous chain as normal. This may not make a lot of sense, but it will here after we do <coughs> six examples. All right. Now notice that if this was a tree, the longest continuous chain would be the trunk. And then you have a branch coming off of it. So step number one is to count to make sure that you have the longest continuous chain. We actually had two options. We could have gone one, two, three, four, or we could have gone one, two, three, four. I decided to go with the linear format. Either way would have given you the same answer. Okay, so what is the longest continuous chain? How many carbons? Four. So what special prefix do we use for four? Bute. And how do we end it? Ain. Butane. So this is called butane. Okay? But it's not just butane. There is a carbon branch off of the second or the third carbon. You see, if we number it this way, this carbon is one, two, three, four then that means the branch is on the third carbon. But we're not Asians here. Asians read from right to left. We're Westerners. We like to read from left to right. So if we number it this way, then it's on the second carbon. So which one is correct? And is there a correct answer? The answer is Yes, there is a correct answer. Which one's correct? The smallest one. So you need to number this chain in such a way that the branches are always on the smallest carbon. Okay. Two. Now, how big is this branch? How many carbons in that branch? Four. One. What prefix oh, do we one. use? Oh, yeah. Meth. And how do we end the branch? Y-L. 2-methyl-butane. 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 All right. Once again, two possibilities. Bailey, is this the longest chain? Or is this the longest chain? This or this? All right, so let's erase that. That means that is your branch. Okay, so Bailey, how many carbons do we have in the longest chain? What prefix do we use? What suffix do we use? Let's talk about the branch. Which carbon is the branch on? Or the? Bailey, is it on one, two, three? Or is it on one, two, three? It's on three, not on three, right? Choose the smallest number, which is three. How big is the branch? One carbon, two carbon, three carbon? Okay, and what prefix do we use for one carbon? And how do we end it? Three methyl pentane. Very good. Very good. All right, here we go. Riker. What's your longest chain? Uh, 
there's even this possibility, right? Or this possibility. Okay, any way you have it, what's your longest chain? Which is? First page, what's the prefix for three? Probe, how do we end it? Now, how do we deal with this? What if we have two branches? How do we communicate? How would you, com and this kind of makes sense. How would you communicate, Riker, with somebody that doesn't have this picture in front of them that you're dealing with two different branches? What prefix would you use to tell them that we are dealing with two different branches? Well, then that would be telling them that you have a two-carbon branch. What are the branches? How many carbons are in the branches? One carbon, one carbon. So what prefix do we use for one carbon? Okay. But how would you tell people that you have two of those methyls? Is there a way of saying it using letters? Did you ever play with a couple of no SARS when you were a kid? You never played with di no SARS? Oh, two no SARS methyls. Two no SARS. What are two no SARS? It's a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, wait. A die is the word that we use to refer to two things. You guys are wondering, what is a nosar? A dinosaur. Triceratops. Remember Allosaurus? That was my favorite. Smaller than Tyrannosaurus, but still nasty. Allosaurus. Those were my favorite two nosars. How about that? Dimethyl. What does dimethyl now sound to you? Like you have two methyls. And where are those dimethyls located, Riker? Which carbon? Are both of them on the second one? Because, as you can imagine, if you have a larger molecule, they, the, the, the two methyls could be found on different carbons. So 2,2, two, or you could have them 2,3, or 2,5, or 3,6. So you have to tell me where, if you have two methyls, you have to tell me where each methyl is located. This actually makes sense if you just take a moment to look at it and think about it. This actually makes sense, to, to it, but it has to leave nothing for the imagination. Mm. This stuff does not leave anything that could be misinterpreted. So right. something as simple as, most of you would go, ah, it's just two dimethyl. They'll know that it's both on the second one. You, you can't assume that. There are people out there that could very well go, dimethyl, okay, so one of them is on the two. Where's the second one? They're very concrete thinkers. So you need to be very, very, very specific. You have a three-carbon chain. Then you have two methyl branches that are found on the second and on the second. Oh. Three-methyl heptane. Ben. Yeah. How many carbons is the main branch? Six. Try again. Five. Try again. Seven. Yes! Good job! Excellent. And you got it only with three guesses, which is pretty good. Yeah, sometimes I hate the first name that I was given. Okay, what does three methyl mean? Okay. Um, this means that there is a what? The YL means there's there's a branch, and where is the branch? On the third carbon. Okay, so does it matter which side you count from? Yes. No. 
If you want to make this three or if you want to make this three, it doesn't matter. But we're Westerners here, so let's go three. How, how big is that branch? Not that big. Well, be more specific. Since it says methyl, how big is the branch? Two. Try again. Three. Try again. Four. Try again. One. Yes! That time he only needed four guesses. You're not getting any better. Okay, so now how do we end this monstrosity? By making sure that carbon has how many bonds? Try again. Ben? You said three. Try again. How many, how many bonds must each carbon have? One. Try again. Two. Try again. Four. Yes! One, two, three, four. 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 And don't forget this guy. One, two, three, four. Wow. You're a good guesser. You always get it within five guesses, which is good. That's how you've made it these last 12 years by guessing. You're, you can always get it within four. But what happens if you're multiple choice and there's just four options? All right, Spencer. Give me. I'm not going to talk anymore. Everything you say comes out on YouTube. Five years from now, people are going to ask me, who is that guy that's constantly talking? You could delete it. No, I'm not going to. Why? Because it's too much trouble, and it's you that's being humiliated, not me. Yeah, they don't even know who I am. I will let them know who you are. Do you have younger siblings? They'll laugh at you. They'll be in my classroom. That was my big brother. He was an idiot. Still is an idiot. <laughs> All right, Spencer. Is that uh, no. No. What? <laughs> Guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Matamorros. That's not how you pronounce it. Matamorros. That's not how you pronounce it. You explain to me. How do you pronounce M-A-T-A-M-O-R-O-S? Matamoros. With a soft R. Oh, because it is a double R. You only roll double R. Exactly. No, you always roll the no, R's. No, you don't. No, no, no. Matamoros. Ask Miss Ferguson. Matamoros. Ask, ask Mr. Okay, so better. Ask Mr. No, ask Miss Mossuffler. She's from Cuba. Matamoros. Wait, is that better? Matamoros. Matamoros. Okay. Matamoros. All right, here we go. Spencer, eight. Are, do we have any branches? On the third, what kind of branch? A one or a two or a three? Try again. Okay. All right, now how do we end this? And how many hydrogens do we add? Careful with what you said. You said four for each one, but look at this. This carbon is already bonded twice to carbons around it. Does that mean I need to? What? No. What should rephrase that, Spencer? Bonds. Right. So however many hydrogens, make sure that each carbon has how many bonds? Four. Four. One, two, three. One, two, one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Now, would this have been correct if Jeffrey had decided to do it like this? Yeah, it's the same thing. It depends on how you number these things. That is still on the third carbon, because you should always number it in such a way that the branch is on the smallest carbon. Last question. 
Jeffrey. How big is the trunk? And the branch? Where? Make sure everything has four bonds. That's it. Those are alkyl groups. Tomorrow, things get a little more complicated by the introduction of double and triple bonds. Any questions? What's Randy last name?